whatever metaphor you want to use, these things act super quickly. And one of the most important of these classes are the hormones that we've been talking about for a couple weeks now called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are not nutrients, but they depend on nutrients for their effects and for their production. Prostaglandin deficiencies are real, they're significant, and they play an important role in disease, especially autoimmune disease, especially diseases of inflammation. This, is, of course, covers most, if not all, chronic degenerative diseases. That means if you're dealing with any chronic long-term disease, diabetes or autoimmune diseases of any kind, God forbid cancer, arthritis, inflammation, there's more than likely going to be a prostaglandin component, either in terms of the amount of prostaglandins that you're making, not enough prostaglandins, or the balance of prostaglandins. And you really want to make sure that you're using nutritional supplements that support prostaglandin production or prostaglandin balance. That means if you have any chronic disease, any chronic degenerative disease, you can pretty much rest assured that there is a prostaglandin component, which means you want to be supplementing to help your prostaglandins. We talked about the ultimate EFAs as the main nutritional player in helping maintain prostaglandin health. If you're dealing with any, and I mean any, chronic degenerative illness, chronic illness of any kind from acne to atherosclerosis to diabetes to Crohn's disease to autoimmune disease, whatever, you absolutely must get on a daily dose of Ultimate EFAs or your Ultimate Essential Fatty Acid Plus. There's no better way to do it. No better way to get your essential fatty acids than to get on a daily dose of the Ultimate EFA Plus, which is packed with prostaglandin-supporting fats, especially GLA, which we've talked about in the past. Then there's the zinc connection. We've been talking about zinc for the last couple of days. Just like prostaglandin deficiencies are real, and just like they play a significant role in chronic illness, the same can be said about element number 30, zinc. Zinc deficiencies are also real. Later on, we're going to be talking about vitamin C and prostaglandins. Vitamin C plays a major role in prostaglandin health. I've been seeing a, not a, a lot of craziness, a lot of nonsense about ascorbic acid poisoning or ascorbic acid toxicity and ascorbic acid somehow being problematic. I got a call a couple of weeks ago from, from a guy who turned his girlfriend or I think his girlfriend or his cousin or some, some lady he knew onto the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. She looked at it and she said, oh my God, there's ascorbic acid in there. I can't use it. That's bad stuff. I read on the internet. That's bad stuff, ascorbic acid. There's a lot of ignorant, boneheaded, non-scientific journalists and ignorant healthcare professionals, I'm sorry to say, who are spreading silliness, silliness about ascorbic acid being toxic. And in some cases, I've actually read articles claiming that ascorbic acid is not even a vitamin because it requires various plant and food factors uh, to do its work. I have a Facebook friend, Janine. She sent me an article. I know she's probably listening to the program. Hi, Janine. Thank you for the article. I like reading articles even if they're crazy and nonsensical just to see what people are saying. Anyway, Janine sent me this article that made the claim that because ascorbic acid uh, requires plant factors or has synergist, not that it requires plant factors, but they're synergistic plant factors, meaning some factors in plants that are found with the ascorbic acid molecule help to support ascorbic acid. Uh, this guy who wrote this article, and I don't even want to mention him because I actually kind of like him, even though this article is ridiculous. He says that uh, because food has these vitamin C boosting elements, these ascorbic acid synergistic elements, that somehow by itself ascorbic acid is not really a vitamin. Somehow I tell the author of this article that ascorbic acid is made in our in animal bodies. I'll hang tight. I'll, I'll finish this up when we come back from our break. And take your phone calls as well, 855-660-4261. On the bright side, we'll get your phone calls here in a second. Got a couple lines open at 855-660-4261. Uh, before we went to break, I was telling you about this article that I read. Uh, my friend Janine sent this to me, claiming the vitamin C or ascorbic acid is actually what they said. Ascorbic acid is not a vitamin. Why? Because ascorbic acid is uh, divorced or separated from other factors which act synergistically to support the activities of ascorbic acid. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't get a lot of benefits, a lot, a lot of benefits from ascorbic acid. In fact, you do. That's a uh, all you got to do is get on scholar.google or PubMed and just look up ascorbic acid in cancer or ascorbic acid in autoimmunity, ascorbic acid in all kinds of things. Ascorbic acid does great work, unbelievable work. And it is, in essence, by definition, a vitamin in the sense that you can eliminate deficiency diseases by using ascorbic acid. True, plant food. Uh, 
plant new, uh, food based vitamins are always going to be best because you do get cofactors. That's true. But that doesn't mean that ascorbic acid isn't a wonderful nutritional supplement. And somebody ought to tell the author of this article that ascorbic acid is made in the bodies of most animals. Ascorbic acid is made in the bodies of billy goats and cows and chickens and birds and reptiles and pretty much all animals except for primates and uh, the fruit-eating bat and guinea pigs. Those are the only and human beings. Those are the only animals that don't make their own ascorbic acid. Other animals make ascorbic acid and they get they don't get scurvy and they don't get heart attacks and uh, they don't make rutin and they don't make factor P and they don't make all these other synergistic nutrients that this author claims are necessary for ascorbic acid to do its work. So ascorbic acid is great stuff. Do you want more evidence to support ascorbic acid's effects, vitamin-like effects? All you got to do is read Linus Pauling or Abram Hoffer or Thomas Levy or Dr. Matthias Rath, all brilliant scientists and medical researchers with the most impeccable of credentials and all of whom are very, very clear and very definitive about the fact that ascorbic acid supplementation is an absolute must, absolute must for preventing illness and degenerative disease and mitigating the effects of all kinds of health issues from heart disease to cancer to autoimmunity. By the way, if you're following the news, it's hard to avoid hearing about the Ebola virus. Well, guess what? Vitamin C or ascorbic acid is one of the best ways to protect you from Ebola. You know, we'll finish this up tomorrow, and then we'll talk some more about zinc and the importance of zinc for, well, just the importance of zinc, period, uh, for skin, for diabetes, for liver health, and also for helping build prostaglandins. We'll do that tomorrow. And then I'll get into a little bit about this whole Ebola craziness that's out there. Don't fall for it, folks. You want to scared. Fear is never appropriate. If you're feeling scared about anything after you read it on Drudge Report or CNN or wherever, Turn it off. Don't read it. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio. If somebody's making you feel scared about something, that's not in your interest. It's good to know about stuff, but not to go into fear. Anyway, 855-660-4261 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. What's up, Crystal, in Quebec? What's going on? Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you this morning, Crystal? Good. Thank you. Um, so I'm calling because I have a redness around my nose. And uh, it has little bumps on it, too. It's been okay. here for about a month. And you haven't been and, rubbing uh, or blowing your nose or anything like that, rubbing with a tissue? You don't have ru- yeah, you but I just got sick a week ago, but it started before that. Okay. Well, mucus contains some, has some acidic quality, so that could irritate if you have a runny nose. That can cause it. If you're sure it's not caused by anything topical, in other words, mucus or rubbing or tissues or something on the tissues, then you always want to regard skin issues as a sign of an activated defensive response. And I'm sure you know, if you've listened to this program, that your body has a defense system, has a defense department, has an army and a navy and an air force, and it's kind of located throughout the body. This Defense Department is spread out, dispersed throughout the body, but it's especially concentrated in two main areas, and that's the skin and the digestive system. In fact, as far as immunity goes, the skin and the digestive system are like two peas in a pod, stuff that happens, immune reactions that happen via the digestive tract will show up on the skin typically. So the first thing to consider when you have some kind of uh, skin rash, skin um, skin bumpiness, uh, redness of any kind, any kind of blood, uh, if it appears like blood vessels are expanded, like when you have rosacea, if you have itching, all of these need to be regarded as a sign of a defensive response. The body's defending itself against something. Now, if you have a defensive response, there's only one question you need to ask. What would that question be if you have a defensive response? If you want to get rid of the defensive response or correct the defensive response, what would you? Uh, what would be the one question to, to ask? Well, logically, what the heck is the? What is the defensive response? What is the response to? What's the offending agent? If there's a defensive response. There's got to be an offending agent, right? Make sense, Crystal? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. So, the only, and I'm assuming now that there's nothing mechanical going on, nothing surface going on, rubbing or mucus, that kind of thing. Uh, so, if there's a defensive response, we've got to ask what's the offending agent. Well, offending agents get into the body one of three ways. You either breathe them in, and if you breathe them in, you're going to have some kind of respiratory problem. Uh, and that's rare. It happens occasionally, but it doesn't happen that often. A mold can do it. Um, if you're working in some toxic environment, perhaps, and there's toxic air everywhere, there's 
something called sick building syndrome, which Sherry Rogers, Dr. Sherry Rogers, talks a lot about. Love Sherry Rogers' work, by the way. Uh, she has a cool book called Tired or Toxic that came out about 25 years ago, and I consider it to be a go-to reference source for toxicity and immune reactions that occur inside the body via sick, uh, sick building syndrome. That is emanations that come from carpet or, or uh, uh, drywall or asbestos or insulation of some kind. So you can breathe things in. That is conceivable. If you're an IV drug user, you can inject them, or if you have a vaccine, get uh, vaccinated or have something injected into your blood, you can have some kind of reaction that way too. However, by far and away, the most likely way that anything gets into the body that can initiate a skin response is going to be foods and digestive, uh, uh, digestive intolerances, food problems. Eating the wrong food, mm -hmm. basically. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you know, I'm not saying it's always going to be food, but food's going to be the most likely suspect. I'm not saying it's always going to be digestive, but digestive system is the mo most likely suspect. Just, if the, just like if the wife disappears, it doesn't mean the husband did it, but the husband's the most likely suspect. They always go to the husband first, or vice versa, the, right? I, I, you know, if the husband disappears, the way go to the wife first. The boyfriend disappears, they go to the girlfriend first. The girlfriend disappears, they go to the boyfriend first. Doesn't mean they did it. It means you got to clear them as the most because they're the most likely suspect. Likewise, and this is so true for every kind of skin issue. You guys, I've been in the skincare business 30 years, and I can't think of anything more fundamental to tell you about skincare products because there's char or about skincare issues because there's charlatans everywhere in the skincare business. There's charlatans everywhere in the computer computer business, in the car business, in the insurance business, in the government business, in the legal business. You know, everywhere we got, we got deceitful snakes, but nowhere are they more prevalent than in the skincare business. And it is so offensive to me as a skincare professional who's dedicated my life to helping people to have to wade through all of these charlatans who know nothing about skin, selling products, lying to you, telling you a, a, about causes and, and reasons and, and um, uh, the, the background behind skincare problems when they know nothing about what's occurring. So your topical skin issues are almost always going to be an immune or digestive or food-based problem. Focus on foods. How do you do it? Well, first of all, if you have any kind of digestive problems, that's going to be great. If you have a bowel movement issue or gas or bloating or heartburn, that's awesome because then you can link the, those symptoms to foods. And more than likely, once you correct your digestive problems, you're also going to correct your skin problem. Hang on, Chris, I'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 uh, is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. Love to hear from you. If you have a success story, you want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, 855-660-4261. We're coming back with Crystal, talking some skin care. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication. Listening to the bright side I'm on the Genesis Communication Network. Hey, Crystal, before I forget, why don't you send me an email, Ben at ksco.com? Put your address in there, and I'll send you out some of my Omega 6 healing cream on me for your schnoz ben there. Yeah. At uh, KFCO. No, no, Ben at K for King, S yeah. for Sam, C for Cat, yeah. O for Oscar. Give me, a, give okay. me, a, give me a, about a week or so to get it out to you, though, okay? Uh, I, you can use I it. I sent an image of it uh, about a okay. week ago to your website, but uh, oh, I guess I didn't. No, I haven't seen. I get so many of these emails. I got to figure out a way to get to my emails a little bit better. But anyway, uh, you've had it for a week, and that's telling me that it's probably more than. No, no, no. I had it for a month. I'm sorry, but you had it six weeks ago. Right, I meant to say you had it for a month. Uh, that tells me it's probably not mechanical, that it's more than likely something to do with food. So look for food reactions. If you know you have them, you're ahead of the game. If you don't know you have them, look for them. That's always the first thing to do. Uh, whenever I see bumps or rashes or redness, I'm always looking for some kind of immune response that begins in the digestive system. You can use nutrients to support digestive health. Probiotics are very effective. The Biolumin Nightly Essence, of course, is my favorite probiotic supplement. Try the, uh, Z, uh, the uh, Fucoidin Z or the Z Radical. I like the Fucoidin a little better. Uh, three capsules in the morning. Uh, you can also take three capsules at night if you want to get a little bit extra. And of course, the Mighty 90 essential nutrients will help also. So between the Mighty 90 essential nutrients, looking for digestive issues, Bioluma Nightly Essence, Fucoidin Z, and then this Omega-6 healing cream that I'm going to send you out. You should be good to go. What else are you going to say, ma'am? I'm sorry, Crystal. Oh, the Z radical, is that zinc? No, no, no. It's zinc is important, though. You might want to grab uh, 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Sounds like you've been listening. 
uh, which is good. <laughs> so zinc would help you. You can also use topical zinc. Zinc oxide sometimes helps with topical rashes. You can get that at a health food store. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate can help. But the fucoidin Z and the Z radical, uh, don't be thrown off by the Z part. The fucoidin is the good part, and that's a, a special kind of algae or sugar that's derived from an algae that has wonderful soothing properties. You can actually put it right on the right on your rash, and it can help soothe the rash a little bit. Um, and you can also use aloe right on the rash. Sometimes that helps, although you have to be careful 